created for you all that is in the earth, then turned he to the heaven and fashioned it as seven heavens, and he is knower of all things. <laughs> And when thy Lord said unto the angels, Lo, I am about to place a viceroy in the earth, they said, Wilt thou place therein one who will do harm therein, and will shed blood, while we we hymn thy praise and sanctify thee? He said, Surely I know that which ye know not. <laughs> And he taught Adam all the names, then showed them to the angels, saying, Inform me of the names of these, if ye are truthful. They said, Be glorified. We have no knowledge saving that which thou hast taught us. Lo, thou, only thou art the knower, the wise. He said, O Adam, inform them of their names. And when he had informed them of their names, he said, Did I not tell you that I know the secret of the heavens and the earth? And I know that which ye disclose and which ye hide. And when we said unto the angels, Prostrate yourselves before Adam, they fell prostrate, all save Iblis. He demurred through pride, and so became a disbeliever. And we said, O Adam, dwell thou and thy wife in the garden, and eat ye freely of the fruits thereof, where ye will, but come not nigh this tree, lest ye become wrongdoers.
but Satan caused them to deflect therefrom and expel them from the happy state in which they were. And we said, Fall down one of you, a foe unto the other. There shall be for you on earth a habitation and provision for a time. <laughs> Then Adam received from his Lord words of revelation, and he relented toward him. Lo, he is the relenting, the merciful. We said, Go down, all of you, from hence. But verily there cometh unto you from me a guidance, and whoso followeth my guidance, there shall no fear come upon them, neither shall they grieve. But they who disbelieve and deny our revelations, such are rightful owners of the fire, they will abide therein. O children of Israel, remember my favor wherewith I favored you and fulfill your part of the covenant. I shall fulfill my part of the covenant and fear me. All right, Musa, you want to okay, go ahead? Uh, go on, go on, go on. No, I just want to know if you want to go through that, like, verse by verse, I guess. Yeah, sure, we can do that. Um, I have another, I think it's, hold on, let me double check here. Um, 15, 11, uh, 14 verses for you guys that talk about the same uh, instance or story, but it goes a little more in detail. Uh, would you guys like to hear that first, or would you guys like to go verse by verse first? Totally up to you, man. Okay, yeah, I will just play the um, other 14 verses and then we'll we'll dive into it. Also, um, I got some hadiths for you guys as well, so yeah, just give me two seconds. وَلَقَدْ مَكَّنَّاكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَعَايِشْ قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ And we have given you mankind power in the earth and appointed for you therein a livelihood. Little give ye thanks. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ ثُمْ and we created you, then fashioned you, then told the angels, Fall ye prostrate before Adam, and they fell prostrate. All
وَلَقَدْ مَكَّنَّاكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَعَايِشَ قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ And we have given you mankind power in the earth and appointed for you therein a livelihood. Little give ye thanks. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ ثُمَّ صَوَّرْنَاكُمْ ثُمَّ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ لَمْ يَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ And He created you, then fashioned you, then told the angels, Fall ye prostrate before Adam, and they fell prostrate, all save Iblis, who was not of those who make prostration. قال ما منعك ألا تسجد إذ أمرتك قال أنا خير منه خلقتني من نار وخلقته من طين He said What hindered thee that thou didst not fall prostrate when I bade thee? Iblis said I am better than him Thou createst me of fire, while him thou didst create of mud. He said, Then go down hence, it is not for thee to show pride here, so go forth, lo thou art of those degraded. قال أنظرني إلى يوم يبعثون. He said, Reprieve me till the day when they are raised from the dead. قال إنك من المنظرين. He said, Lo, thou art of those reprieved. قال فبما he said, Now, because thou hast sent me astray, verily I shall lurk in ambush for them on thy right path. Then I shall come upon them from before them, and from behind them, and from their right hands, and from their left hands, and thou wilt not find most of them beholden unto thee. He said, Go forth from hence, degraded, banished. As for such of them as follow thee, surely I will fill hell with all of you. And unto man, O Adam, dwell thou and thy wife in the garden, and eat from whence ye will, but come not nigh this tree, lest ye become wrongdoers. وسوس لهما الشيطان ليبدي لهما ما وري عنهما من سوآتهما وقال ما نهاكما ربكما عن هذه الشجرة إلا أن تكونا ملكين أو تكونا من الخالدين then Satan whispered to them that he might manifest unto them that which was hidden from them of their shame. And he said, Your Lord forbade you from this tree only lest 
ye should become angels or become of the immortals. And he saw unto them, saying, Lo, I am a sincere adviser unto you. Thus did he lead them on with guile, and when they tasted of the tree, their shame was manifest to them, and they began to hide by heaping on themselves some of the leaves of the garden. And their Lord called them, saying, Did I not forbid you from that tree and tell you, Lo, Saturn is an open enemy to you? <laughs> They said, Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. If thou forgive us not and have not mercy on us, surely we are of the lost. He said, Go down from hence, one of you a foe unto the other. There will be for you on earth a habitation and provision for a while. He said, There shall ye live, and there shall ye die, and thence shall ye be brought forth. Ya Bani Adam, qad anzalna alaykum libasay yuwari sawatikum wa risha wa libasu attaqwa thalika khayr thalika min ayati allahi la'allahum yadhakkaroon O children of Adam, we have revealed unto you raiment to conceal your shame and splendid vesture, but the raiment of restraint from evil, that is best. This is of the revelations of Allah that they may remember. Yeah, all right. So those are the, basically the um, the two main uh, extracts from the Quran of the story of Adam alayhi salam. Um, there are other verses, but they they're here and there. Um, for example, if you guys want, I will list you some sources and some references. Um, chapter 15, verses 28 to I think it's 36, has um, another another instance of it. Um, you guys can look that up if you want. If you want, later on we can play it. Uh, you guys have already heard 7, 11 to 15. There's also a quick verse in chapter 17, verse 62, that speaks of the issue. Um, some of these sources that I'm listing aren't exactly related to it. There are things that talk about like um, when the angels descended down to take some clay from the earth, so on and so forth, which also are revealed in Hadith. Okay, why don't we ask anyone if has some questions about the creation of the one he's in. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, does anybody in the room, uh, specifically non-Muslims, if there is any in here, have any questions about uh, the particular issues that we just listened to in the Quran? Well, one of the things I think is interesting is um, even though Adam and Eve were forgiven while they were still in paradise, there's that line that says, get down out of here, all of you. 
and go, um, you know, fight it out on Earth. So there still seems to be some sort of consequence, or am I off base on that? Yeah, um, secular opinion, when was that? I, I don't know how many years ago. It could have been a gazillion years ago. It could have been 6,000 years ago. There's, there's no date given, to be more specific. As far as um, when Adam and Eve, alayhi salam, uh, were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, yeah, it, it said that he wept for 70 years for being kicked out of the Garden of Eden, and then he wept for another 60 years because he had uh, disobeyed God and went against God's commandment. And then he wept another seven years when his son uh, Abel was killed um, by Cain as well. Come on, let's give it a try one time. <laughs> I, I don't know, secular. I, I really do not know. There is no exact number given. Um, however, I do believe that Adam Islam, asked forgiveness. Yeah, you, you're right, Demi. He he asked forgiveness, and then he was he was tossed down to earth. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Does anybody else have any other questions? I think if you went back and um, you did it again, first by verse, I guess, just in English, uh, we could get a better understanding. Yeah, sure. I I can't. Um, I was trying to figure out how to get that thing to only play English. I don't know how to do that. I don't think you can. So we would have to listen to the Arabic and then the English as well, verse by verse. Oh, you can. Um, if you go to the Quran Explorer, see where it says script? Um, it says Osmani now. Just highlight that and go to hide. That is great. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, to um, I just want to make note a quick story about the, the creation of Adam al Islam. It says that in Quran chapter... Let me see here. Um... I've lost it now. Uh, chapter 38, verses 71 to 72, uh, also in Hadith by, um, I, I, excuse me, I'm going to both to brutalize his names, but Abi Musa al Shari narrated that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said so on and so forth, and I'll get to that as well. And Ibn, Ibn Masud also said it too. Um, basically, when the creation of Adam was uh, more or less declared by God, he he had created Adam alayhi salam's soul 1,000 years before he had created his uh, body. So his his soul was created, or his spirit, whatever you'd like to call it, was created, and then his body was created 1,000 years later. Um, it says that uh, basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the uh, angel Gabriel to take clay from the earth, from all the four corners of the earth, uh, so they say, um, basically to mold Adam alayhi salam. He, the angel went down, talked to the earth, and, and the earth said, I seek refuge in Allah that you will not take from my quantity nor quality or disfigure me. And the angel basically heard this, uh, you know, this cry, went back to God and told God, you know, what the earth had said. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent uh, Michael after that. Um, Michael went down to the earth. The same thing happened with the, you know, I seek refuge in Allah, you know, that you don't take from my uh, quantity, quality, or disfigure me. And the angel and then Michael went back, told God the same thing, what had happened. And then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the angel of death. And the earth said, you know, I seek refuge that you don't take away from my quality nor um, disfigure my uh, shape. And then the angel said to himself, um, I seek refuge with, uh, with Allah from returning without carrying his... Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Okay, I will slow it down, guys. Um, so then the angel of death, after the earth had said, I seek refuge uh, from Allah that you don't take from my quantity or quality or disfigure my shape, again taking the clay to form Adam, uh, the angel of death replied, um, I seek refuge in Allah from you know not returning with this clay. So the earth basically it gave it up to the angel of death. Um, instead of taking from one specific spot on the earth, the angel of death, um, again, figuratively, went to the four corners of the earth, as the earth does not have corners. Took yellow, brown, no, yellow, black, red, and white clay, I believe it is, and Adam was created. Um, took the dirt, and water was added to the dirt, uh, and let it settle for a bit, and then the dirt became sticky, like mud. You, you know, when you make mud, it gets sticky, and you can basically mold it like plasticine. Uh, he molded his body, and then he let it sit and get hard. 
Um, he waited a, w a while, you know, to let it get hard, and then Iblis used to walk by his body, his uh, that did not have a soul in it yet. It didn't have a soul. It was still empty. It was lifeless. And he used to ask questions, you know, what is this? He, w he was puzzled at first, and then finally he realized what it was. And uh, he said to Adam, alayhi salam, before he was alive, when he was still, like, again, like a shell, like a pot piece of pottery, I guess you could say. He said, if I am made to have um, influence or rank over you, I will lead you astray. And if you are made to have influence or rank over me, I will disobey you, um, basically, until the end of time. So excuse me, even before uh, Iblis was told to bow down to Adam along with the other angels, he was already enemies with us, mankind. Um, Adam alayhi salam, when he woke up, when God gave him his first breath, he uh, woke up to all the angels prostrating to him, except he saw Iblis in the distance, he was not um, powing down. He didn't know what Iblis was, he didn't know what a jinn was, he, he didn't know nothing, he had just woke up, he was clueless, much to say. Um, he had questions, you know, why was this thing bowing down, why were the angels bowing down, and so on and so forth. He later then, you know, talked to uh, Iblis Shaitan, you know, and he, he they had like a, a conversation, and Adam alayhi salam had figured out that Iblis was, uh, he only cared for himself, he was selfish, so on and so forth. And then, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Adam, told Adam, gave Adam, excuse me, the names of all the creatures, the animals, the trees, whatever, their purposes. Actually, it said that, um, God gave the name of, for example, of a bird to a bird, obviously. But when he gave the name of a bird, he he gave like the bird's purpose, what the bird is, it's um, what it's supposed to do. Like he gave everything to know about the bird, and then they summarized it all into one word, which we now know as bird or whatever the language was they spoke back then. So. Um, yeah, that pretty much sums up about that. Uh, what else is there to know about Adam alayhi salam? Um, I think that's about it. Uh, is that what what day was he created? I, I do not know what day he was created, but I know that um, again his soul was. Oh, I did not know that. I know that his soul was created uh, a thousand years before his body. I was unaware that he was created on Friday. Okay, how could it even be a day or on Friday if there was no earth? Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes perfect sense, bro. I, don't, I was not aware. I also know that um, when Adam alayhi salam woke up and he had, uh, what was it, he had sneezed and um, he had said, Alhamdulillah. And then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you know, may the peace and blessings of God be upon you, so on and so forth, or peace and blessings, are, or I grant you the peace and blessings. It's in first person, so it's a little difficult to explain. But um, he also told Adam alayhi salam that this will be a greeting from now on to mankind, to the rest of the people you greet and everything, and thus we have salamu alaykum, and that's where that comes from. Yeah, there's a hadith uh, mentioning um, Adam alayhi salam saying assalamu alaikum to the angels and the angels replying wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi and another version saying wa alaykum salam wa Yeah, that is correct. Um, does anybody want to add anything? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I might be bored. Okay, if we were looking for the main idea of the story, <laughs> as they say, um, you know, looking for the central idea, I would point to the sin, the fall, being the, oh goodness, being the central idea here. That's the central, um, the climax of the narrative, if you will. So, I Demi, are you referring to um, Iblis's sin or Adam Laysanam's sin? I'm, I'm assuming. Well, now that you mention it, there's two central features of the whole story. Um, first, it was Iblis's sin, which was a sin of arrogance and pride. Um, and then, secondly, as a as a result of that, or as an indirect result of that, then Adam and Eve. Fall, um, and what was the nature of? Was it was it, are those two things related? I guess. 
Yeah, I, I would say, again, this is not a scholarly opinion, but this is based on, like, what I've read. I've been reading about the issue now for a couple of days. But I know that, um, you know, is, is Shaitan, he, when he was told to bow down, he, he, he asked, you know what I mean, why should I bow down? I'm made out of fire there. He's made out of clay. Like, ooh, you know, how can you tell me to do this? Me and Rex were having a good discussion about this. Um, and he, he more or less said that, you know, fire is fire is better than clay and uh, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied you know like well how do you have this knowledge how do you know it's better fire or clay like you don't have this knowledge you don't have the right to make that judgment and for that he was kicked out of you know Eden heaven whatever you want to call it paradise and he said okay fine let me you know tempt mankind so on and so forth so I know that um, during the time uh, Adam alayhi salam was tempted so was Eve um, by Shaitan for a long time he would always whisper thoughts you know oh trust me follow me I will lead you to whatever it is you're seeking blah 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 and then he finally um, I guess caught them and made them uh, eat the fruit as opposed to um, wh as far as what links the two sins I'm not really sure there's a link I mean I know that like Shaitan's uh, reasoning behind his sin was just sheer arrogance, sheer pride. You know, he actually tried to reason and argue with God, and like he he tried to justify his actions with God. I mean, imagine trying to do that. But uh, whereas Adam alayhi salam, he he seeked repentance right away. You know what I mean? Um, he he did, what didn't try to justify his actions. He told me exactly what happened. So uh, yeah, as far as a link, I mean, I'm not really sure. Um, if there is one, there probably is, but something out of my knowledge. Uh, okay, just to clarify, I asked, um, how could there be a Friday or any day when there was no earth? So, I mean, I guess I was assuming that there was no earth. It doesn't say that there was no earth then. So there could have been the earth beforehand, so just clarify that. Anyway, uh, there's something else I just remembered. Anyway, I've looked. I remember asking this question before or, and actually finding out the answer but I can't remember I don't, maybe you can refresh my memory that so when uh, Adam and Eve repented then why were they sent down to earth then? because that seems like a punishment like okay now they're sent down to earth right but they repented so can someone help me out on that? Yeah, see, I don't remember if um, he, if Adam Lee repented after he was kicked out or before he was kicked out. Does anyone, does anybody know the order of how that happened? Did he repent before he got kicked out or after he got kicked out? I've also heard that we were actually built for the earth. I think Believer brought it up. Uh, the Khilaf or the, or the Caliph of like uh, the earth, we were built for it. And it also mentioned in the, the Quran you played earlier before, the angels saying to uh, Allah that um, would you place some something that would create mischief on the earth? And yeah, that lecture that you were talking about before, he mentioned he mentioned there was two reasons for this, that uh, the angels saw the jinn who were on the earth creating havoc, stuff like that. And another reason was that Allah told the angels of the free will they would have and stuff like that but I've heard the, the that the angels were referring to the jinn and what they did to the earth as more of a clear answer right, right. right exactly and far goes that they repented after they were on earth so <coughs> that would make more sense as well and yeah and what you're saying our whole purpose in life was for this earth wasn't it so of course that makes more sense here yeah, so thanks for clarifying that yeah, okay, I'll just add on to that, uh, and please excuse my uh, voice, uh, but yeah, uh, they did get forgiven after they were sent to earth further. Uh, their creation, there are three different views where the, the creation actually took place, and one such view is regarding that it took place um, on earth at a certain space. Uh, okay, I really cannot speak up, I'm trying my best over here. So if is the audio fine, or do I have to speak up more? Okay, great. Uh, banana, increase your um, uh, speaker volume. Okay, so <coughs> great. So they were forgiven after they were sent over here. But yes, as uh, Brother Lee uh, pointed out, it's actually very important. Why did God say that He is placing a vicegerent, a Khalifa, on earth? 
that is one of the things that we should discuss which also applies to the current situation the Muslims are in right now God created man to be a representative of the laws of God that was that's the purpose of man Adam was created for that so I want people over here everyone to contribute I will not hug the mic I cannot even speak for a, a, a long period of time uh, altogether but what we should discuss is what the importance of God saying that I am putting a Khalifa on earth let's discuss the importance of that anyone can take the mic now so what you mean is the importance of being a vice regent or a steward right Also, um, I read in Hadith uh, Moses, peace be upon him, and Adam, peace be upon him, having a conversation about uh, Moses pretty much blaming uh, Adam, peace be upon him, for for us being uh, am I lagging? Yeah, no, I'm good. For us being uh, kicked out of kicked out of heaven, I'll post the. Hold on, this is the text, and. Uh, yeah, I'll read it out loud. Um, Allah's Apostle وسلم, said, Adam and Moses argued with each other. Moses said to Adam, You are Adam who mistake expelled us from paradise. Adam said to him, You are Moses whom Allah selected and, uh, as his messenger and as the one whom sp he spoke directly. Yet you blame me for a thing which had already been written in my fate before my creation. Uh, and Allah's Apostle said twice, So Adam overpowered Moses and I saw that hadith uh, several times Wa alaykum salam what do you got? yeah uh, sorry I'll just take a mic, mic for a minute uh, probably that, that's fine uh, although I mean this just went a bit off topic because the story of Adam the creation and whatever happened is actually very important uh, as a Muslim we derive a lot of lessons from it if we take from the beginning God says that he's installing a Khalifa a representative so man is now the purpose is to represent the laws of God which is important to us as Muslims today and the, one of the reasons why we are suffering uh, Muslims generally in the world is because we are not representing the laws of God we have stepped aside from the job that was given to us completely stepped aside and here we are facing a hard time and we do not know how to deal with it so primarily as Muslims what we should do learn from the lesson learn from the story of Adam and try to represent the laws of God through the system of Khilafah secondly when I say system of Khilafah I do not necessarily mean the exact government structure of the Khilafah I do not mean that what I mean is that we should not have man decide the laws that God has already decided when man will not decide the laws of God and I'm really sorry that I'm speaking very slow because I cannot speak faster throat is in a really bad condition when man does not take the uh, take, uh, decide laws which uh, are already directed by God then you are simply representing the laws of God that's the first and foremost lesson that we learn from the story of Adam and the creation secondly we come across something which is known as ego pride the self where we say I did this or I am this that's ego Satan uh, Iblis he worshipped God he knew the reality he knew God was the creator and he knew that nothing hidden from him yet knowing that God is the creator and his knowledge is absolute when the creator said that 
something is more superior to you so bow down to it he did not bow down why? because of the ego because of the nafs this shows and this proves and we Muslims as Muslims we should take a lesson from it that regardless of how knowledgeable you are regardless of what you know ego will make you blind to it will make you completely blind that's what it did to Iblis made him blind so till today and till the end of time he will be an outcast because of his ego he thought he could uh, he thought he knew more than God did this is uh, another lesson that we derive from uh, the story of Adam third lesson that we derive from the story of Adam which is actually a bit contradictory to the lesson which uh, which Christians derive from the story of Adam third lesson is that it is within the nature of man to commit sins as man we commit sin right and when I say man it includes the females in the room as well so please females don't get very um, uh, flattered so everyone commits sins <laughs> but the lesson that we are supposed to derive from it is that he committed the sin they repented and God forgave this is the establishment of the relationship with God that although you commit sin although you break the laws of God yet God is there for you all you need to do is repent with sincerity you repent with sincerity God forgives your sins this is the third lesson that we derive from the story of Adam and if anyone wants to take the mic and continue please do because I'm practically dead right now I'll probably take it later on but anyone please take the mic actually Ikri you sound better when you're sick and there's no Pakavader but it was excellent thank you that the jinn had existed for about 2,000 years before Adam Salam and then shed blood. Therefore Allah sent them an army of angels that drove them out of the depths of the seas. Ibn Abu Hatim narrated from Ali Jafar al Bakr that the angels were informed that the man would cause wickedness and shed blood on earth. It was also said that they knew uh, that no one would be created on earth who would not be wicked and shed blood. I'll post that for you guys in the text. Just give me a sec. Do you know what book that's from? No, I. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that as well, but I just don't know like the source or anything. Okay, I have a question. I uh, hope you guys can also help me with. Um, if they were in paradise, which we're told is is, is a strong case for that, um, why were there rules in paradise? Is paradise not a place where there are no rules and you can do as you wish? Uh, so the question is, why are there rules in paradise? Could you please repeat that? I, I kind of missed the question. Sorry, bro. Um, Adam and Eve, uh, peace be upon them, were, were created and placed in paradise in Eden, which is a garden in paradise. If they were in paradise, why were there rules and why were things forbidden to them? Because paradise is somewhere where you can do as your heart desires. Okay, bro. There are there are three interpretations to that. Uh, statement that they were created in paradise. One interpretation is that this was a place on earth where they were created. Second interpretation is that this was another heavenly realm, not paradise as in the Jannah. Right? Third is that it was the Jannah. So as as Muslims we do not know for sure whether it was the Jannah that you are talking about right now or whether it was another heavenly realm or whether this was on earth right so we're not sure about that but even if you go by the token and it actually you know uh, some scholars question that you know it cannot be the actual Jannah because how can how can 
Satan get into Jannah? How can Satan get into Jannah? Because he had already become a disbeliever. So how did he end up uh, inside there? Right? So there are many questions to that. There are many uh, different opinions to that as well. Uh, some say that you know God permitted him to go over there or it was by the permission of God it was not as if he sneaked inside but this is just keeping in mind or, or taking an assumption that it was Jannah uh, uh, which you are talking about so the thing is that if God would have permitted Satan to go in there God can put rules and this is this is part of our uh, and should be part of the Muslims uh, belief system because normally and you know I've come across like a couple of Muslims they're like you know what's the logic in this what's the logic in this what's the logic in this and I asked them I'm like why be why should there be logic in it why should there be logic in it as the creator he can tell you to bang your head against the wall you have to do that as a creator he can he can tell you whatever there does not have to be a logic in everything right so even if it's the Jannah that you're talking about and I'm talking about God can place a, a, a simple instruction that do not eat from this apart from this do, do whatever you want to but stay away from this so there is no hard and fast boundary uh, that you know this, this thing cannot happen over there because as a creator he can do pretty much everything we do not need to we do not have to seek logic in everything also too another way that um, as you were talking Iker, I just thought about it too like uh, I think it was Scott who asked why why were there rules you know what I mean um, one way to look at it if it's not the Jenna that we're thinking about you know when we go when we die inshallah but like uh, that that's a reward you know that's a place of reward like we we go there because we're being rewarded for you know our actions and so on here um, they wouldn't have to be rewarded because they were created you understand what I'm trying to get at here guys um, they would they were in a place being rewarded for nothing they didn't do anything they did not they didn't do anything bad or good they just didn't do anything they were just created so it's it's the way I look at it too as well but that's just my opinion that has nothing to do with scholarly opinion or anything in fact um, for that explanation I've heard something very similar and a lot of scholars mentioned the three opinions on whether this was paradise or not um, but um, one, of the, uh, one explanation that I've come across is that the place for paradise to be a place where there are no rules is something that's promised to us, as Mujahideen was saying, as a reward. And that paradise without any rules is something that you achieve after you have uh, passed away and you then are judged and up. Yeah, the way, sorry about that, Ikra, the way I look at it, bro, is um, they were, whatever realm it was, like if it was Jannah, you know, paradise where we go when we die, inshallah, and that. Or if it was, you know, somewhere on Earth, or it was some other form of paradise, you know, depending on the three interpretations. The point is, they were created in that place. You know what I mean? Um, for example, if we lived in Hellfire, this is a really bad analogy, but just bear with me. If we lived in Hellfire, the Earth that we live on right now, you know, the dunya, it would seem like paradise. You understand what I'm saying? And this, w but since we are in this world, we were creating this world. We have rules in this world. Thus, Adam alayhi salam was created in wherever one of those three interpretations. He has rules for where he was created. So wherever you were created, you will have rules. And then when you die, and wherever you go when you die, that's the place where you have no rules. That is your reward. You know what I mean? That's that's the way I look at it, though. I think uh, I think the thing I think the thing is sort of like two or threefold, and I think the. What happens is that we human beings, at least you know, according to you know many scholars, is not like um, human being has been. Uh, we are forgetful, right? Human beings are a forgetful, r you know, race, and you know that is even embedded in the Arabic word, the word of uh, insan, right? Insan and nas is from the word nasia, which means forgetfulness. So what happens all the time? So we human beings have in our hearts embedded you know it's part of our nature actually to have embedded our fitra is actually to follow God and to submit to God like there, there are rules that are you know God has a system okay and he imprinted that system in our hearts and that heart that that system is part of our nature now what happens is that when we are in this earth you know two things happen you know we get we we become forgetful and that's why um and that's why 
we dhikr of Allah, dhikr Allah is so important. So we become forgetful and then we sin because we forget about God. We become, you know, we, we, we are in the state of forgetfulness and then we, we, we sin. And then the other thing that happens is that, for example, the shaitan whispers in our hearts and then also our hearts get gets corrupted by our lower nafs, by our, by our lower self. So our lower self, the whispers of shaitan and our forgetfulness are all these three things that conspire us from following what we were truly meant to follow. So what's going to happen in paradise is not that there's going to be these rules that we're going to have to follow. It's simply that all these things that corrupt our hearts will be lifted from us. And only our higher self is going to be there. So, I'm not calling anyone. So, it really is our higher self, our higher nafs, which have our fitra embedded in our hearts, which are automatically created to follow God's law. So, it's not that there's going to be any particular law. It's just that we will be following once and for all our fitra, which means obeying God's order of the universe. So, that's what's going to happen basically in Jannah. Uh, yeah, that seemed like a very good point. Okay. My bad. It seemed that that was a good point. All right, there you go. So basically, people in heaven will be, I guess, I want to say s smarter, but yeah, they'll just act a lot better rather than disobeying. <laughs> so, okay, I guess we're done with uh, Adam. Peace be upon him. Anybody want to talk about Cain and Abel or Qabil and Habil? I don't know. Does anyone else have any questions or whatever want to discuss another aspect of it? Uh, <laughs> which I think, I think I think Dragon Ball messed it up. Do you guys want to continue about uh, Adam al Islam or as Ali uh, mentioned, you know, go on about his children, uh, specifically Cain and Abel? Okay, I have the Quran audio queued up. Should I play with English only or Arabic as well? Or Quran as well, I mean. <laughs> Both? Okay. Ali, you're going to play the Quran? Nah, you do it. I have, I screwed up the queue, but it's uh, Surah Al Maida, chapter 5, 26 to 32. <laughs> Their Lord said, For this the land will surely be forbidden them for forty years, that they will wander in the earth bewildered. So grieve not over the wrongdoing folk. <laughs> But recite unto them with truth the tale of the two sons of Adam, how they offered each a sacrifice, and it was accepted from the one of them, and it was not accepted from the other. The one said, I will surely kill thee. The other answered, Allah accepted only from those who ward off evil. Even if thou stretch out thy hand against me to kill me, I shall not stretch out my hand against thee to kill thee. Lo, I fear Allah the Lord of the world. <laughs> Lo, I would rather thou shouldst bear the punishment of the sin against me and thine own sin and become one of the owners of the fire. That is the reward of evildoers. But the other's mind imposed on him the killing of his brother, so he slew him and became one of the losers. فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ غُرَابًا 
يَبْحَثُ فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُرِيَهُ كَيْفَ يُوَارِي سَوْءَةَ أَخِيهِ قَالَ يَا وَيْلَتَا أَعْجَزْتُ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِثْلَ هَذَا الْغُرَابِ فَأُوَارِيَ سَوْءَةَ أَخِي فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ النَّادِمِينَ Then Allah sent a raven scratching up the ground to show him how to hide his brother's naked corpse. He said, Woe unto me! Am I not able to be as this raven and so hide my brother's naked corpse? And he became repentant. Min ajri dhalika katabna ala bani Israel annahu man qatala nafsan bi ghayri nafsin au fasadin fi al-ard fa ka'annama فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا وَلَقَدْ جَاءَتْهُمْ رُسُلُنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ ثُمَّ إِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِّنْهُمْ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْأَرْضِ لَمُسْرِفُونَ For that cause we decreed for the children of Israel that whosoever killeth a human being for other than manslaughter or corruption in the earth, it shall be as if he had killed all mankind, and whoso saveth the life of one, it shall be as if he had saved the life of all mankind. Our messengers came unto them of old with clear proofs of Allah's sovereignty, but afterwards, lo! Many of them became prodigals in the earth. Okay, that was uh, good. I also heard a story. I just want to comment. That I also heard a story that uh, they were they were born as two sets of twins, and uh, Habil killed Habil, or Cain killed Abel because of his jealousy. Does anyone know where that source is from? Yeah, bro, I think I have, um, oh man, I had the hadith, but I don't know what book it's from, I forget now. I also heard too that there's a hadith that uh, Adam alayhi salam had uh, twins, or 20 sets of twins with Eve. Has anybody else heard that? Maybe I'm remembering wrong. I'm going to look it up just in case. But okay, so if, if that's true about the two sets of twins and the jealousy thing, what was the sacrifice? You mean the sacrifice? Place that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offered from uh, Abel but did not accept from Cain? Yeah. I think one was meat and uh, one was uh, Govi. Wow, that's that's pretty crazy that you know that. Yeah, I, I was going to say blood. I don't know why, but yeah, I, maybe he, he's right. I, all I know is that one, they were animals or something, and obviously one was not accepted for whatever reasons. Isn't it meat and fruit or something in in the biblical form? I've never heard of, I've never heard of uh, some of that Islamically, but I just wanted to know, well, what would it say in like in Tafsir or something or Hadith? There you go. UK seven has posted. Abel offered camel. Cain offered grain. UK, you said that was okay. You've been considered okay. Cool. Yeah. Has anybody else heard that about um, excuse me, Adam Al Islam having uh, twenty sets of twins, or am I just making this up? Because I could have swore I heard that in the Hadith or something somewhere before. I haven't heard it. But for that jealousy story, I've only heard two sets of twins, but it doesn't limit it just to two sets, I guess. Yeah, I mean, he did live for a very, very long time. It's more than likely he had, you know, more than a couple of children. But um, I'm going to look for that little uh, piece of information, see if I can find it. Okay, uh, Demi, the story was that they were, they were born as two two sets of twins and you were supposed to marry the opposite twin like opposite in the other set and uh, Qabil or Cain was jealous of his brother and he slayed him but I don't I didn't know the reference to that story and UK pointed out I think it's even because they, they had the same they had the same mother but it's just two sets of twins. So it was Cain and his twin and Abel and his twin. 
and they're supposed to marry the from the different set of twins. Yes, Cain was supposed to marry Abel's twin sister. Yeah. Okay, guys. Um. So I don't know. I'm assuming that we're pretty much we're done for today's session. Uh, we have been going for about an hour and 45 minutes, roughly. Um, I w in my opinion, it went, went rather well. Again, this is only a trial error. This is our first time running through this. You know, inshallah, as we go through further, God willing, it will be more organized, more better, for lack of better terms. Um, hopefully, it was recorded. Dragon Boy X. No, I'm just kidding, brother. But again, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I, I think it was very good. I will just uh, end it with um, Al Fatiha, and then we will resume back to normal Islam talk. So just give me two seconds. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم The name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful الحمد لله رب العالمين Praise be to Allah, Lord of the Worlds الرحمن الرحيم The Beneficent, the Merciful مالك يوم الدين the day of judgment. Thee alone we worship, thee alone we ask for help. Show us the straight path. The path of those whom thou hast favored, not the path of those who earn thine anger, nor of those who go astray. Alright guys, thank you for uh, showing up. May God reward you for listening. Jazakallah and coming as well and that wraps it up. I hope it was a success and everybody else.